Yet the one who is full of compassion forgave them their sin and spared them. So often God held back the anger that might have been stirred up in rage. My name is Sister Annie Thompson, a member of this community, a Benedictine sister. I have been a nun for some 56 years. After an amalgamation with the Convent of St. Benedict and St. Joseph of Minnesota, I returned to the Bahamas in 1968, um, 1968 and went back to Minnesota and returned back to the Bahamas in 1970 um, after the death of one of the early sisters to be principal at St. Lead School in Camp Road. Actually, we are really sisters, nuns, for those who were really um, in the community not to come out, but, you know, protected, um, doing the work of God within their community, praying for the rest of us. Uh, Roman Catholic sisters are women who decide to give their lives to God and to work for Him in many ways in the community in the church, outside, in the community, working with the church, teaching, uh, visiting the sick, taking care of the sick and poor, and all of those things. So this is what we do as Roman Catholic Sisters. We started as a community belonging to the diocese and under the bishop. And in 1960, uh, middle 1962, 1962 an amalgamation took place with community from Minnesota. Sisters of St. Benedict in St. Joseph, Minnesota. An amalgamation and the sisters then became Benedictine sisters. Some of these you'll see. Sister Elizabeth, it's Elizabeth Claridge, that's her name. Yeah. Sister Elizabeth Claridge, Sister Maria Ramin, Sister Agnes Roll, and Sister Mary Patricia Russell. And I'll go right down the line. Mm -hmm. These are out of order, but that's okay. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> and it was started by the three, the three founding sisters. Uh, those sisters up there, you know, I showed you. With Maria Rami, Sister Teresa Simonet, and Sister Clarence. Um, Clara, uh, those three were the first founding sisters, the first black saint, so to speak. And um, he was the one that they were named after. See all these pictures of the sisters here now. That's Sister Maria Remy. She's one of the first one out of those three you saw up there. She's one of the ones. Sister Maria Remy from Fox Hill. Started. This is Sister Hyg Sister Agatha, Sister uh, yeah Agatha Sisla, yeah Sister Agatha Sisla, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sisters, the Sisters of Saint Benedict. Yeah, so that's where our mother house is. And the, the white picture, the white statue there. That's you have that already. That Saint Benedict. Uh, uh, so when we pray, we pray the same. Um, we take the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Poverty means that we um, try to live as you know, common, the common life, the, the, the life, not extravagant life. We, we don't, um, most of us work and have gotten salaries, but we don't get them. It comes to the community to take care of the entire community. Um, so we and we try not to be extravagant in our use of anything. That's um, uh, poverty. The chastity. We, we of course you know we don't get married, and so that's uh, that's the basic thing. You remain um, a chaste and without um, a marriage. Uh, nowadays, in the later years, there are some nuns and sisters who have been married and have children because rules have changed. 
your, their chastity begins from the time they return and enter. So it's a little different now. And um, obedience uh, is that you're obedient to the leader of the community and to the vows that you have made. Your obedience uh, refers to the way that you um, obey the, 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 the church rules, regulations, and the community's rules and regulations. And um, usually you discuss things with the prior or prioress and get something, and depending on how things go, you obey that situation. I'm Sister Marva Coakley. I entered this community in 1977. And um, I'm the youngest member of this monastery, and I'm the prioress. Uh, the prioress being the mother superior, the administrator of the, of the community. We have active sisters, and they're called nun. They cloistered. They don't come out of the community. They don't work with the community. Whereas we here in, in the Bahamas, we are nuns, but we are active. We go out into the community and we work with the people um, besides prayer and work. So we balance prayer with work. The nuns, they, work, they pray and that, that's, that, that's, that's what they do. No one goes in to end. So for instance, we have the water man coming um, every two weeks. But no one bring anything into them to go into their monastery. Whereas we have people come like you yourself, you would not be able to go into a monastery with nuns. Okay? You would not be able to come and sit here with me if I was in the cloistered community. And I think that's the, the big difference. We took three vows. One is poverty obedience and stability. Now when we talk about the rules, what it incorporates is a conversion of life. So we are always on the road to conversion. You know, people say in the world, the lay people say, um, I have been sa I'm saved. Well, every day is a same day. It's a conversion. The steps to conversion. It's a process. You live that till you die. None of us has no no sense walking. You're trying to be, and so that's that's what our life is about here in the community. And so we become one family from different places. And when we um, when we think about our finances, so who takes care of us? We take care of ourselves. Um, we all get an allowance. When I was out working, I was the last person working with, a, say for instance, with a salary. So anybody working, Sister Mary Benedict was su um, superintendent of schools. We all still get the same allowance, no matter what your job is, okay? And so that goes into one account. So when there's a need, I said, I'm in the car, I need gas, the community buys it. I'm sick, the community takes care of me. All of my needs are met by the community. And that's why she told you that we, we pool our resources. But it's, it goes deeper than that. It's because of the vow of poverty and, what, and humility. What we need, we ask for. And it will be provided. It's an easy process. You have to answer the call of God for your life. You know, you, your life has to have some purpose. And when you think of your relationship with God, you want to do and follow His will. To do His will and to follow Him in all things. And in the best way for my life to 
to reach out to God's people, especially those who are um, the young and the elderly, those who will need help. And I wouldn't say the poor, because it's not only the poor who need help, because spiritually we are all poor, and we are seeking a purpose in our lives, and want to have a relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, when I thought back about my own life, and what others have done for me, and I just thought, I want to do that too. And I've been mentored by sisters, and uh, I see the way they live and the examples that they give, and I said, why not me? And here I am, almost 42 years in the community, and loving it and see nothing else for me.